All right, class, let me try another video solution. This is from chapter 17 and uh, number 15. And it gets, it's, our, it's our hard one. It's with our, our optics, and it's drawing these rays and figuring out where the image is, is located here. So um, let's, let's read this one. It says, draw the ray diagram to uh, locate the image of a 5-centimeter tall object that is 60 centimeters from a convex mirror that has a focal length of 30 centimeters. Okay, so I'm going to draw the convex mirror. So here's the bending of the mirror. Uh, let me put just kind of a dotted line as a reference. We call this usually the optical axis. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'll make kind of a big mirror here. And the key to this is to realize that it's convex. And so the focal length is, I'll put it maybe uh, right about here. They say that this is then 30, this distance. Um, and then the object, of course, was 60. So if I kind of double that, we're looking at maybe putting an object right here, which I'll just call it the height of the object. Although they do tell us that the height of the object is the five centimeters. So we know that the, that's five centimeters. And now it says to go ahead and find, and they say by a drawing, and we'll do a drawing, but I think it'll be a little bit easier with our triangles. And that's how I try to explain it in uh, the video lectures. And so I'll, uh, I'll do that again. Uh, in fact, well, let's come up with the equation. Uh, let me also emphasize that uh, during the exam, you probably should write down the equations ahead of time for this scenario. Uh, there's three scenarios. Uh, one scenario involving the convex mirror, so let's do that now. And the other two involving the concave mirror. And uh, let me not take time to do those in this video solution. But if you had those three sets of equations, then you can just kind of plug and chug into the uh, equations that are already worked out. But let's let's work out this equations and let's uh, let's draw the rays. Uh, I might find a colored uh, marker here and say, okay, the this ray that would leave the top of the arrowhead and go towards the convex mirror would bounce off at such an angle that it would appear to be coming from this virtual focal point. So that's why the convex one had this virtual focal point. Now, the reverse of that would be a ray that was heading towards it. And so maybe a little more accuracy, if I drew another ray that was heading towards the focal point, it then should come off and go parallel to this optical axis. So it looked like that. Okay. And so somebody standing over here looking at the rays reflected would have the appearance, let's see, that this, these two would cross right about here. And so our arrowhead, the top of the arrowhead, would be right here. And if we did the same logic with the middle of the arrowhead, we would get, you know, an image right there. And if we did the same thing with the bottom, we would get a little bottom right there. So what we would say for this person standing over here is it would look at as if the light was coming from this spot. And so you would say the image is smaller and behind the mirror. And so that's why we would call it a virtual. And it would be upright, too, I should point out, because that doesn't always happen. Although it always happens with this convex mirror. It doesn't always happen with the concave mirror. Sometimes a concave mirror is upside down, and sometimes it's right side up. So the concave mirror is a little more interesting than this one. But the convex mirror is always smaller, always right side up, and always 
virtual that is inside of the of the mirror. So kind of the boring uh, part, but nonetheless, uh, interesting enough to have a set of triangles. And so let's I'll work those out. Maybe I'll do a set in orange uh, first. And if you were to draw this ray continuing on through until it got to the focal point, and then also down here on the optical axis, and you split what would become a big triangle that includes the object with right here at the mirror, which is the same height as the image, you would get a small orange triangle here and a big orange triangle. And so if we label this with things like from the mirror is the object distance, and so the image would be the image distance, again, from the mirror. And then this right here being the height of the image. Uh, look what we get mathematically when we compare these two similar orange triangles. We would get something like this. The height, H prime, the height of the image and the height of the object, that ratio, would be the same as the length of their bases. So this would be the distance of the image, and this would be the distance of the object plus the focal length. Now, another set of triangles, and maybe I'll do it in green here, would be something like this, where I would make a big green triangle with a small green triangle representing the height here of the image. And so if you can see the two triangles, here's the small green one and here's the big green one. And again, if we do the same set of, of mathematics, we say, okay, the height of the image is to the height of the object as this distance. Now, this distance we might need to think about because it would be this, this whole distance minus the image distance. Now, this whole distance is the focal length. So then when I subtract off the image distance, I'm left with that small base on the green small triangle. So that would be focal length minus image distance. And then it would be over the whole base, which is the focal length. So those are our two sets of triangles and therefore our two equations. And so if they are giving us everything but two, which, which they are in this problem because they're asking for, uh, let's see, how did they, they phrase it? It said, uh, find the location from the convex lens. Is that it? Draw the ray diagram to locate the image of a five centimeter tall object located, excuse me, all right, so I guess we only have to find one thing, which is its location. So we really could get away with... Uh, I think I wrote this wrong. I apologize. Let's see, that uh, orange one should have been this length. That's a focal length. Yeah, okay, my bad. So it's focal length for that green one over object distance minus focal length. Okay, glad I noticed that before I went too far. But we need to do this one to get the height of the image so we can put it over here to ultimately answer their question, which is the height of the, of the image. Oh, watch, here's what I mean by that. So I'll put in what I do know. Uh, so height of the image, I don't know. Height of the object, I do, that's five. Focal length, I do know, let's see, what did it say here? 30, so there's a 30. And object distance is 60, so 60 plus 30. And so this by itself is looks like a 30 over a 90, which is one third. And so height of the image, if I bring the five over, is five thirds. Okay, so they didn't explicitly ask for the height of the image, but that is an important first step, was what is the height of the, of the image. So then when I come over to here, I can put in the height of the image. That's five-thirds over the height of the object, which is five. And so, by the way, that's going to then reduce to one-third. Okay, 
Um, and then I'll have the focal length, which is the 30 minus the image distance over the 30, okay? So if I bring this 30 to the other side, and then I get the 30 minus the image distance, uh, that right there would be a 10. And then if I bring image distance to the other side and the 10 back over to here, I get a 20. So that's the answer they want. There is 20. Where, where is it located? 20. And then this is its height of the image. All right. Hope that helped.